Hey guys, the objective of this video is to find the hydraulic gradient in our flow net. So once again, here's our flow net, and we're going to be finding the hydraulic gradient at point B. So in the past, we know that the hydraulic gradient, which is sometimes abbreviated by the symbol I, is equal to the change in head on the change in length. Okay, and for the examples we've done in the previous videos, it's been quite easy. So say, for example, we saw we had a cylinder and we had a total head change. So we could work out the head at that point at that point and we could find DH, the change in head. And then we would just measure or we would just see the, the length and that would be just the change in length. And it'd be very easy to find. But for a flow net, it's not so simple. We don't have such simple shapes. We've got these um, curvilinear squares and we've got funny stuff going on. So the formula is the same. The hydraulic gradient is now equal to um, the change in little h over the change in little l. So it's, it's a change in head over change in length. And this is per uh, curvilinear square. So it's per square. So the hydraulic gradient is going to change at every single square because you're going to be getting different changes in length. So the first thing we can find is change in h, which is easy. We've found that before. And that's just the head drop from EP to EP. So this change in h and that change in h. So the change in h from in every section from EP to EP is always the same, right? So we found that in the previous video. We know that that change in h was 0.36. So we found that already. Change in h is 0 0.36 meters. So this is change in little h. Once again, it's the hydraulic gradient change or drop from EP to EP. So it's not the total head, which we represent by capital H. It's not that. It's the small h, which is the head, which is the change in head from EP to EP. So between equal potential lines. Now the change in length, this is going to change from, for every single case. So we're looking at this. We're looking at point B. So we want to find at B, the hydraulic gradient at B. So this is going to change depending on where we are. For B, the change in length will be this length here, so change in L. So we would come and measure this off. We're going to have to be very approximate. And we would measure, and we'd say we get around two centimeters. Okay? So from there to there, our change in length is two centimeters, which in our scale is two meters. So we have change in length equals two meters, which means we can find our hydraulic gradient, which is the change in H, so 0 0.36 on the change in L, which is 2 meters, which if we were to work this out, we would get 0 0.18. So that's all you do for hydraulic gradient. Um, just keeping in mind that for a flow net, the hydraulic gradient will change depending on where you are looking in your flow net. Um, once again, just to clarify this one more time, the head, the small change in H, is the head drop from EP to EP, and the big H, this big H, is the total head drop from here to here. So just keep that in mind. But once again, the hydraulic gradient, you would just find per curve linear square, where change in H is the same for every single one, but change in L is going to change depending on where you are in your flow net. Anyway, guys, hope that helps.